Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the crazy new Tesla Roadster, Tesla superchargers now open to other EVs, the new Model Y color, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, the Model Y has once again earned an extremely impressive crash test rating from IIHS. IAHS is basing their ratings off new, more strict standards this year, making it more difficult to earn a high safety score, but that didn't stop the 2024 Model Y from earning a near-perfect score. They awarded it Top Safety Pick Plus, a title only 22 vehicles earned this year, and only two EVs. The other EV to win this award was the Hyundai Ioniq 6. For context, they gave this award to over 100 vehicles in the 2022 to 2023 model year, so less than a quarter of those vehicles remain in the category today. The president of IAHS said, quote, we followed the tougher requirements we introduced last year with another major upgrade to the award criteria in 2024. This year's winners are true standouts offering the highest level of protection for both vehicle occupants and other vulnerable road users. As for the Model Y, it earned the highest safety score it could possibly get in every category except for two. Under seat belts and child restraints, child seat anchors still earned the A, the next highest rating. It lost points there because the lower anchors were too deep in the seat. Also in the back seat, it lost points on rear passenger restraints and dummy kinematics. In this photo, we can see the head of the child dummy in the back seat gets a little close to the front seat, but doesn't make contact. IAHS elaborates that, quote, rear passenger dummy injury values indicate a low risk of injury to the head or neck and chest. During the crash, the shoulder belt remained in an ideal position on the dummy's chest. So even where the Model Y can improve, it's still an incredibly safe vehicle to be in. The test goes to show that EVs can be some of the safest cars out there and are only going to get safer from here on out. Next up today, a big new study is showing us just how many customers are sticking with Tesla and EVs as a whole. S&P Global Mobility has just released a new study on vehicle brand loyalty, and Tesla has taken nearly half of the major awards. We've known for a while now that most customers, once they get their first EV, don't really want to go back to driving ICE vehicles. In some studies, less than 1% of EV drivers had any interest in ever owning anything other than an electric vehicle. I can attest to that personally, especially with Teslas, because I've owned nothing but EVs for the last few years, and I certainly don't see myself ever going back. In the last 10 plus years that Tesla has been selling cars, they have built a generally solid reputation, and as such, customer loyalty has always been quite high. Now we are getting an added insight into how loyal these customers are and why. In their new study, S&P Global Mobility analyzed households from across the country that own new vehicles and chose to go back to buy another car from the same manufacturer. Of the nine manufacturer loyalty awards, Tesla has gone home with four of them. Those awards are overall loyalty to make, ethnic market loyalty to make, highest conquest percentage, and alternative powertrain loyalty to make. Tesla is by far the electric car manufacturer with the highest customer loyalty because there are so few EV options that can really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tesla's offerings, especially considering their supercharger network. Their sales both to new and old customers are growing every year as more drivers take the plunge to switching to electric and then choose to stay in that ecosystem. S&P added, the popularity of both the Model 3 and Model Y among current owners, along with the brand's ability to attract many ICE customers to the BEV space, contributed to Tesla's multiple awards for the second year in a row. Since launching their first EVs just over a decade ago, Tesla has grown very quickly to become one of the most compelling automakers on the market, and clearly customers agree. The company is beating tons of other legacy automakers with decades of experience and reputation at their own game. I've owned several Teslas over the years and I just took delivery of my refreshed Model 3 and I'm loving it so far. Once you make the switch to an electric vehicle and have good charging options like Tesla offers, you never really look back on that decision and Tesla has done a lot to make that happen. Next up today, we have a bunch of updates about a Tesla vehicle we've heard about for a long time now, but never seen come to fruition, the Roadster. The Roadster was Tesla's first vehicle, built off of a Lotus. But in 2017 at Tesla's semi-launch event, they did a surprise one more thing at the end. They drove the fully updated Roadster out onto stage, showed off its design, a launch, and then unveiled its specs. It would get a 1.9 second 0 to 60 and 4.2 second 0 to 100 miles per hour, but Elon was quick to say this is the base model. The quarter mile was 8.9 seconds, top speed over 250 miles per hour, and with its 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, it would get 620 miles of range. It would also have three motors, and it was supposed to be available in 2020. Orders opened up and they are still available, requiring a $5,000 deposit plus a $45,000 wire transfer within 10 days of that. There also used to be a Founders Series Roadster, which required the full cost of the car, $250,000 up front, but those have sold out. 
On top of that, the Roadster was a referral program award, which many owners earned. Tesla quickly changed that program, but they still owe customers over 80 Roadsters once it comes to pass. Some even earned two. Tesla originally said they planned to make 1,000 Founders Roadsters, and then normal ones from there. Of course, though, this car never came to be. It was supposed to come in 2020, and it's 2024 with no sign of it. They have kept prototypes out there and given hints about what it would bring, but most of its performance was replaced by the Model S Plaid. This brought a 1.99 second zero to 60, almost matching the Roadster specs, and it's a much cheaper, less niche vehicle. That is part of what has led Elon Musk to talk about the Roadster being developed in partnership with SpaceX to achieve a 1.1 second zero to 60, it being able to fly a little, and more things like that. With the Cybertruck now ramping, the Roadster has become even more of an afterthought, with many expecting Tesla will never make it. However, this past week, Elon tweeted quite a bit about this car and the crazy things they plan to bring to it. He started by saying, Tonight, we radically increased the design goals for the new Tesla Roadster. There will never be another car like this, if you could even call it a car. He said it will be a Tesla and SpaceX collab, and then added, Production design complete and unveil end of year, aiming to ship next year. I take that to mean the design will be finalized this year. And as always with Elon timelines, it's important to note that he says they are, quote, aiming to ship it next year. Aiming to ship in 2025, so I wouldn't be surprised if we don't truly see it until 2026. In response to Sawyer Merritt regarding its 0 to 60, he said the 0 to 60 will be under one second, quote, and that is the least interesting part. From there, he hinted that it can fly a little, whatever that could mean for a car, and I'm extremely curious to see what that would mean in practice, but Elon seems extremely excited, at least for the moment. He added, quote, you will love the new Roadster more than your house. As for the product demo, which could come around seven to eight years after this car's original unveil, he added, I think it has a shot at being the most mind-blowing product demo of all time. This is all extremely exciting, but should be, of course, taken with many grains of salt. Elon has promised a lot over the years, and many of these things have come true. Many doubted the Model Y, and especially the Cybertruck, but when it comes to certain things like FSD, it continues to bring an improving product with lofty goals that are never achieved. For the Roadster here, this hypes it up, but also confirms that it has once again delayed another year. It's also promising a lot. While the Cybertruck is here today, it delivered a max 340 mile range for over $30,000 more than the originally announced price for a 500 plus mile range truck. So there's a lot of room for doubt here as well. At the same time, it is cool to see that Tesla hasn't given up. While they are always working on making cars for the masses and their true future important product will be their next generation affordable EV, the Roadster will be a great way for them to showcase the peaks of their technology. The Cybertruck is somewhat of a niche vehicle compared to things like the Model 3 or Y, yet it has turned into an incredible marketing tool for the company. Even if you aren't wanting that truck at all, it piques curiosity about the company's more normal products. I think that's what the Roadster could be here. At a price of at least $250,000, they aren't trying to make these a massive part of their growth, so it's the side of them that wants to do something cool and drive awareness. What do you think about the new Roadster, though? Will we see these features come to that car, and will we see it released in 2025 or 2026? Leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts. Next up today, one small update that could be exciting for the US-made Model Y. The Kilowatt spotted a quick silver Model Y at Fremont's outbound logistics lot, sporting North American plates. This color currently only comes out of Giga Berlin, so it could point to Tesla offering this car out of Fremont in the near future. They recently introduced Ultra Red and Stealth Gray in the US for the Model 3 and Y, so maybe they're going to add this option also soon. I personally would love to see it as Tesla's five colors have been getting a bit stale. Even Ultra Red and Stealth Gray, while new, aren't that much different, and Quicksilver really stands out. But more importantly, we have some huge updates for Tesla's supercharger network. For a while now, it has been known how much of a lead Tesla has in North America with supercharging. They've talked for a while about opening them up to other owners, but this of course takes time since they want to do it right. 2024 has been the year they plan to open their chargers to other automakers, and nearly every automaker in the US has committed to switching to Tesla's connector in 2025. In the meantime, vehicles with CCS will use adapters. We've seen hints of brands making their adapters available soon and more, but yesterday, Tesla officially opened their supercharger network to Ford EVs. Jim Farley tweeted saying, starting today, eligible Mustang Mach-E and F-150 Lightning owners in the US or Canada can reserve a complimentary fast charging adapter for their Ford EV and access Tesla 
the superchargers. From there, he added, I'm proud Ford is first to offer our customers this access. With Tesla superchargers added to the Ford Blue Oval charge network, it more than doubles the fast chargers available to them. Paired with plug and play, no other apps are needed to start a charge. I've tested it myself and it works great. Making something this easy to use takes a lot of hard work behind the scenes, so congrats to Ford and Tesla teams for making this happen. I would also like to thank Elon Musk and the Tesla team for their close collaboration and leadership to help change the lives of so many EV customers through improved access to charging. Ford's website details how it works and how to get an adapter. On top of that, they detail that this only works with V3 and V4 Tesla superchargers. V2 150 kilowatt chargers and others are not supported. That's interesting to see and must have to do with a certain compatibility Tesla added with V3 chargers. We knew they would reserve some chargers for themselves, but I'm surprised that 150 kilowatt chargers are unavailable to Ford's EVs, especially considering that's the max charging speed for them. At the same time, Tesla launched their own NACS website, which says charging for all. On it, you can see a customer using an adapter at a supercharger to charge a Mach-E, and they show the app's integration. It seems you won't need the app, but you could also use the app if you prefer. There are 27,000 plus stalls for Teslas, 15,000 plus stalls for NACS, and 500 plus stalls for other EVs at this point. Quote, to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, we're making it as easy as possible for drivers to own and charge an electric vehicle. That's why we're opening our fast charging network to allow more EV drivers to charge at over 15,000 supercharging stalls across North America. And with approximately one new stall opening every hour, we're just getting started. They'll be opening to more automakers throughout 2024 and 2025, and they detail the next four automakers that will be added. Coming in spring of this year, Rivian, GM, Volvo, and Polestar will all get access to those same Tesla superchargers. This is a huge milestone for electrification as a whole, will be great for Tesla and their charging business and more. It makes it that much better at this point to buy a Mach-E or F-150 Lightning and take a road trip. It should be a breeze and soon will be for those other four companies. At the same time, this does raise some questions. First, will this be an advantage taken away from Tesla? To a degree, yes, but they will also still be making money with these chargers. It also could be better in general for consumers as Tesla gets more competition with true charging ability, but they will still have 12,000 more stalls than these other EVs. The bigger question though is how will this work with charger congestion? Superchargers can already get busy at certain times, and now they are adding all of these other cars into the mix. I think they are purposely taking this slow in order to address that, but the bigger issue is charge port location. As MKBHD pointed out for this video posted by Tesla, quote, did you catch it? In Tesla's own video with a Mach-E, because of the charge port location, the owner parks in the spot that's now blocking two spots where a Tesla would take up one. If the charging station fills up the remaining spots with Teslas, the app will show one charger is available, but the parking spot is blocked by the Mach-E. This will be something that happens due to varying charge port locations and short supercharger cables. Some EVs will simply take up two spots, preventing another Tesla from supercharging next to it, since they have to do it backed in. V4 superchargers should help with that issue, but those are still relatively new. I'm really curious to see how this develops, but I hope the main way Tesla plans to address this is by continuing to build many superchargers. Next up today, after nearly a decade of rumors and development, Apple has officially stopped work on their long-awaited electric car. This project, codenamed Titan, was first reported on back in 2015, and its development has been shrouded in mystery ever since. Despite this cancellation, some reports suggested that it was still being worked on as recently as a few months ago. Given how much of this project has happened behind closed doors, we can only guess as to the project and what was going on, based on rumors. Bloomberg reported recently that this car had been pushed back to a potential launch in 2028 without self-driving initially, which left a lot of people questioning the state of this project. Nevertheless, Wired posted an article soon after, detailing that prototypes had driven over 45,000 cumulative miles in 2023 while testing their internally developed self-driving technology. Apple is first and foremost a tech company, so it's a bit disappointing, but still not terribly shocking that this product won't come to light. Perhaps we may see this self-driving technology continue to be developed and licensed out to other car makers, but that's just speculation. Now, most of the 2,000 people who were working on this car will be shifting over to Apple's upcoming generative AI project, Ajax. The company is spending millions per day training this new AI model and will be launching it as a product later this year, reportedly. As much as Apple is one of the most interesting consumer technology companies out there, a shift into car manufacturing has always felt like a pretty big leap for a company that primarily makes phones and computers and actually doesn't manufacture them in-house. Instead, they are choosing to focus their efforts on tech that is more relevant to their other goals and products after reportedly spending more than $10 billion in development on this project. Next up today, a Model S in Germany recently crossed an unprecedented milestone. 
After buying the Model S secondhand with 18,641 miles on it, this owner has made it his mission to see just how many miles this car can handle. 10 years later, the Model S has now reached 1.2 million miles. He posted the vehicle's odometer on X, reading 1,960,000 kilometers, or 1,217,887 miles. This is officially the highest mileage Tesla in the world today, and it's incredible to see this car lasting this long. It's two-thirds of the way to being the highest mileage vehicle in the world. The vehicle holding that title is a Volvo with over 3 million miles, which it has accrued over the past 52 years. This Model S has of course received several battery and electric motor replacements over the years though. To be precise, it's on its fourth battery and its 13th electric motor. That's likely the reason Tesla hasn't really acknowledged this accomplishment, aside from Elon saying congratulations almost a whole year after it passed the 1 million mile mark. Previously, he had mentioned the Model 3's drive unit being able to last up to a million miles, with the battery that should be able to last at least 300,000 miles, but that's an entirely different vehicle, with tech that's a decade more recent. I would love to see a Model 3 reach this kind of milestone, though, and see all it had to go through in regards to repairs long term. The owner of the 2 million kilometer Model S has noted that this car was one of the first performance Teslas ever built, so its motors tend to have some more issues here. His latest motor and battery seem to be doing much better, though. That is one cool thing to see in practice with this experiment. As EV technology gets better with time, this vehicle could keep performing better and better. I can't wait to see an EV last this long on its original battery as well, and that's very likely something that could happen in my lifetime. Battery technology is only getting started, and we should continue seeing improvements to battery density, charging speed, degradation, longevity, and then ultimately, recycling. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see the best accessories to get for your new Tesla Model Y or 3, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.